Hockey Championship. Top of the First Division Cleveland Bombers play Premier Division title chasers Whitley Warriors. And British champions Durham Wasps beat the rapidly improving Sunderland Chiefs. These games are played over three 15-minute straight time periods. Last weekend, we had the perfect form guide with both divisions shaping local derbies. It soon became obvious that twice winners Durham face their toughest battle yet if they want to win the trophy outright, because down at the seaside, well, they believe the tide is at last turning. It's a different world down at Whitley Bay these days. The Warriors are the most improved team in the country, and for most of the season, they've been leading the Premier Division. It was back in the early 70s, before some young Braves were even born, when the good times last rolled at Hillheads. Now, with ice hockey really booming, the crowds are flocking in again, especially when the opposition is the old enemy, Durham. The Wasps aren't used to taking second place in the North East, and in Sunday night's Northumbria Cup game, they came out determined to shift the local balance of power. But there's a new quality that's emerged in the Whitley team, belief, and it only comes from winning games. Obviously, we've got three better class imports than we've ever had before. Uh, they are making a big difference to the team. Mike Babcock has stiffened the defence up and blocking the gaps at the back. And uh, Scott Morrison scoring very vital goals. Goals that change games. Uh, Luke Chabot is scoring a lot of goals, vital goals. And this is rubbing off on the rest of the team, on the British team. is making them play with more confidence. They practice harder, they're trying harder. Because they know now, they believe they can win, that they, that, as I say, they're playing with more confidence. Passions always run high between these two teams, as Durham's latest import, David White, soon found out. Yet another transatlantic crossing underlines that the champions still have their problems. Even the odd disputed goal is welcome to the new full-time coach, who's tried to keep Durham progressing. Well, the biggest thing I've tried to develop is a third line and try to get that extra third line in because it's really tough to play with two lines. Boys get tired and then you start to get penalties, etc. So that's the biggest thing I've tried to do. And what would you say have been the major improvements in the Durham side over the year that you've been looking for? I hate team play, totally. Yes, team play. Uh, they're not playing as individuals anymore, they're playing as a team. And they win as a team and lose as a team. And that's, that's been great to see. It was neck and neck in this final as Whitley once again confirmed their new form much to the satisfaction of their coach. Unbelievably, Matthews had been sacked earlier in the season, but the players had demanded he stay. Well, the committee in the judgment thought that uh, the team weren't doing very well, but I made it quite clear at the beginning of the season that we had three new imports. Uh, there was one or two British players that we'd lost, experienced players, and so I said that we would use the Norwich Union Cup to get ourselves ready for the Heineken League. And this is what we've done, we've proved the point. Proving anything against Durham is never easy, but the home team edged ahead through Terry Ord. But within a minute, Stephen Johnson equalised. On form, Durham and Whitley should contest the Castle Eden Cup final, but elsewhere in the region, they've got other ideas. Graham Aisford is convinced his Sunderland Chiefs are on the up, and point to his team roster as the reason. The club has suffered through a drain of players to new rinks, but now at last he's got a settled squad even if it was still hard push to overcome top of the table Cleveland in the region's other local derby. The lads that came up from second team had a year's experience last year and they came in this year with benefit from that experience. We've got three good imports this year, which has proven we're winning quite a few games this season. So we've got some fantastic talent coming up. We've got, you know, junior internationals, uh, one lads currently on trials for the under-20s, and he's only 16 himself. You know, they're, they're the likes of the lads we want to keep. If we can keep them, you know, some of the going places in the future. The only place Bombers manager Richard Coomber wants to be is back in the Premier Division. But at least the desperation of last year's relegation has been overcome, and the revival is well underway. But in a division where some of the new teams struggle to even compete, Cleveland insists their playing standards haven't dropped. They've actually improved. I mean, we've had a, a good coaching this year from John Hutchings and his two fellow imports, Pat Mangold and Andre Marlowe. And the team's got a lot more system than it had last year. It, it knows what it's supposed to be doing. It's playing well out of defence and attacking, so that it, it's a better team than it was last year. Hard though the Wearside has battled, Cleveland's power saw them win this derby 9-3. In the Castle Eden, the Chiefs face holders Durham, while the Bombers square up to the Warriors. Tough games, both of them, but the underdogs will certainly give it a go. But the Castle Eden has shown over the years that you know the semi-finals are very close because of the short format. So we, we quite fancy our chances. 
your best players are going to be getting the most ice time, you know, because they won't have time to, to get tired out. And then when we're in the final on the wedding staff, it'll be a different game, won't it? If Cleveland and Sunderland needed any reminder of how tough a battle they can expect, the Northumbria Cup final certainly provided it. It was still hammer and tongs in the third period, with this veteran skipper Alfie Miller put Warriors ahead, but not for long though, as one of Durham's outstanding youngsters, Anthony Johnson, soon responded. Fierce rivals the teams may be, but it doesn't obscure the mutual respect. Durham are a very formidable outfit, especially on their own ice, and uh, it is good to beat them. Durham are a good team, we've been top for three or four years now, and, uh, but to me it's just another game, it's Durham's another team in the league. I think we really deserve it. They're playing very well, they're playing as a team, and they're playing very well together. Uh, all three imports seem to have fallen in good place, and uh, their English boys are doing very well too, so taking no, nothing away from what they did, they're playing very well. With seven minutes left, it was still anybody's game at six all, but it was Whitley who were finishing stronger. Scott Morrison, the country's leading scorer, finally swung the game the Warriors' way. And with Luke Chabot adding number eight, the home fans could savour another victory against the old enemy. 3-3 it stands now this season, but if Alfie Miller wants to get his hands on the Castle Eden Cup as well, he knows he will have to battle every inch of the way. And you can see full coverage of both nights of the Castle Eden Cup in a special edition of Extra Time next Thursday night at 11 o'clock. If you intend to swell the crowd at Durham on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, then make sure you buy your tickets in advance. A crowd limit has been set. <laughs>